Let's review some of the common radiographic signs of pneumoperitoneum. So the first image I have in front of you is an upright chest radiograph where the patient is sitting up. And what I want you to pay attention to is the diaphragm. And you can actually see the diaphragm as this thin white line on both sides actually. And under the line you see this lucency and that is the free air. So anytime you're looking at a chest radiograph, it's extremely important to look under the diaphragm, look in the upper abdomen and see if you see evidence of pneumoperitoneum because that's a critical finding and most of the time is a surgical emergency. This next radiograph is kind of a variant of what I already showed you, which was free air under the diaphragm. But in this case, we have what we call the continuous diaphragm sign. And in the continuous diaphragm sign, you again see the pneumoperitoneum underlying the diaphragm. There's a lot of gas underlying the left hemidiaphragm, and you see a little bit under the right too. But what we also see in this case is a continuous line of that lucency, which traverses the midline, and it's almost connecting the two collections of gas underlying the hemidiaphragms. And that is the continuous diaphragm sign, another telltale sign of pneumoperitoneum. So this next radiograph is an image of the actual abdomen. We see quite a bit of dilated bowel. And what I wanna show you here is a Riegler sign. Riegler sign is another very common sign that we associate with pneumoperitoneum. Riegler sign happens when bowel and free air are kind of superimposed on the image. And because of that, you see both sides of the bowel wall as evidenced by a white line on the image. So I want you to focus on the left hemi abdomen here. And more specifically, I want you to focus on this white line that we can see going cranial caudal in the left hemi abdomen. This white line is Riegler's sign. This white line is a loop of bowel. It is the bowel wall. And we're able to see both sides of the bowel wall because there is superimposed pneumoperitoneum on the radiograph, which then allows for us to see both sides of the bowel wall on both sides of these arrows. And that is Riegler's sign. To be honest, it's kind of confusing to even explain it, but I want you to just focus now on the right abdomen and I want you to look at this loop of bowel containing gas right here. Notice how we can't really see a defined line of both sides of the bowel wall. That is because that's a relatively normal looking loop of bowel in comparison to the left side. I have another radiograph of the abdomen pulled up and in this one I'm gonna show you the telltale triangle sign, which like Riegler sign is another one of those clear indicators of pneumoperitoneum. So I want you to focus on this part of the image here and I want you to look at this triangle right here and I'm gonna outline the triangle. That is the telltale triangle sign. Normally when we see gas in the abdomen, it should be clearly within a bowel lumen. In this case, we have this triangle of lucency that doesn't really look like bowel. Air within bowel shouldn't form a triangle like that. And what we're seeing here, this triangular lucency, I'm again outlining it there, is gas that is free between loops of bowel that is just in the abdomen as pneumoperitoneum. Anatomic gas within a bowel lumen shouldn't look like a clear triangle like that, and that's kind of how this sign got its name as the telltale triangle sign. It's non-anatomic appearing in the form of gas within bowel, and that's because it is free gas that is sitting between loops of bowel or organs or whatever else in that area. If you're ever unsure, suppose that you see something that could be a regular sign, but you're not sure, which is to me, a common instance where I think I see something that looks questionable, but I'm just not entirely certain. Or if you see what could be the telltale triangle sign, but maybe the patient isn't that sick or there's just not enough evidence for you to make that call, then you can always suggest a lateral radiograph. And that's what I have pulled up here is a lateral radiograph where we're looking for pneumoperitoneum. Like with the chest radiograph, when a patient is upright, gas is anti-dependent. So in the case of an upright patient, it will go under the hemidiaphragm. Similarly, when a patient is lying on their back, gas should go up because it's anti-dependent and it will sit under the anterior abdominal wall. And you can look on a lateral radiograph for that and you can see the pneumoperitoneum sitting up there outside of bowel. So for instance, this gas that I'm outlining here is not contained within bowel and that's what you're looking for. I want you to contrast that to this loop of bowel here and there's gas inside, that's all the gas there. But this gas external to that loop, that's the pneumoperitoneum, and you see it sitting right under that anterior abdominal wall. So with this lateral radiograph, you can look and see what gas is within bowel, is all the gas within bowel, or is there gas that is sitting up there outside of bowel, and that would be your pneumoperitoneum. That's exactly what we see here. We see this lucency that is clearly not within the bowel lumen because we see loops of bowel containing gas, and this gas, this pneumoperitoneum, is outside of that. This next case is a pediatric patient, and it's not as subtle, and this is demonstrating what we call the football sign, which I really don't understand how they got football out of this sign, but I'm gonna at least show you the pneumoperitoneum in this case. So I want you to notice first these loops of bowel that have some gas, at least. Here's some more bowel loops here. There's some bowel loops there containing gas, but look at all this lucency that I'm putting my arrows on here, here, 
some lucency there. That's all pneuma peritoneum, and there's so much of it that you can even see the outline of some of the organs. For instance, this is the liver here that I'm starting to outline. You can't quite see the spleen, but you can at least see the liver, and that, that is because there's a contrast from all this lucency, all this pneumoperitoneum, that's clearly not within bowel. Again, we don't see what anatomically looks like bowel. We just see all this lucency along the margins of the abdomen. That is pneumoperitoneum, and that is what we call the football sign. This case is even more obvious. There is clearly pneumoperitoneum, again, all this lucency on the margin of the exam. And what I wanted to demonstrate here is tension pneumoperitoneum. You've probably heard of a tension pneumothorax. This is a similar entity in that there's so much gas, there is mass effect upon the abdominal organs and they kind of get pushed towards the midline. You can see this is liver here and the liver is being pushed away because of all this gas. And similarly, all the bowel loops, all the other organs are being pushed internally because there's so much gas and it creates this positive pressure effect similar to a tension pneumothorax where you have a pneumothorax that starts causing midline shift and the heart and mediastinal structures to shift to the contralateral side from the pneumothorax. So this is tension pneumoperitoneum. And that's my review of the radiographic signs of pneumoperitoneum. Thanks for watching.